hello everyone welcome again to our channel and yes today we will be continuing our discussion dun sa requisites or essential elements ng contracts yes na discuss na natin uh, lahat ng provisions concerning consents and napakarami nun. that's why we decided to cut it and so for now dito sa part 2 we will be discussing the objects of the contracts and also the cause of the contracts. So that is Article 1347 to Article 1355. Medyo mas konting provision na lang compared to that of consent. But then it is equally important to study and learn this concept same way with consent para mas maintindihan natin ang contracts. Anyway, let's begin. So, ano ba yung object of contracts? Ano ba ang pwedeng maging objects ng contracts? Yan ay sinagot ni Article 1347. Sabi nga eh, all things which are not outside the commerce of men including future things so lahat talaga pati future things may be the object of a contract diba so all things including future things basta yung qualification hindi daw outside the commerce of men and then all rights which are not intransmissible so meaning which are transmissible may also be the object of contracts so things rights and then sabi pa all services which are not contrary to law morals good customs public order public policy may likewise be the object of the contract so yun all services things rights services. Pwede siyang maging object ng contract. Of course, merong mga qualifications. Then, sinabi naman dito sa second paragraph, no contract may be entered into upon the future inheritance except in cases expressly authorized by law. So, yung future inheritance as a general rule, hindi talaga siya pwedeng maging object ng contract. Although, except yung mga situations na inalaw ng batas. Anyway, what are the requisites para maging object ng kontrata, objects of contracts? So first, dapat yung thing or service must be within the commerce of man. So ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng commerce of man? Kumbaga, obviously, hindi siya outside the commerce of man. Ano ba yung mga things na outside the commerce of man? Yung sidewalks, yung parks, what else? Yeah, personal rights or yung mga status and capacity of persons, di ba? Honorary titles and distinctions. Another, public offices, political rights, di ba? Yung the right to vote hindi naman talaga sana pwedeng ibenta. Or, although, ewan ko, ewan ko sa inyo kung binibenta nyo yung boto nyo. Right? Another, property pertaining to public dominion. Yun nga, yung examples natin kanina, plazas, sidewalks, lang naman ibenta mo yung karagatan, sa'yo ba siya? Hindi. Diba? Sacred or common things, hangin, dagat, yeah, and those are the things that are outside the commerce of man. Now, let's proceed to another requisite. Sabi daw, it must be transmissible. Pero, usually naman, yung mga rights are transmissible. Although, merong hindi as provided by law, pwede rin naman sa stipulations ng contracts, di ba? Or by its nature, hindi talaga siya transmissible. Now, an example is the right to vote. Transmissible ba yung right to vote? Hindi, right? Your political right is not transmissible. At dahil intransmissible sila, meaning hindi sila pwedeng maging object ng 
contracts, which are not contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, public policy. How about future inheritance? Sabi natin kanina, general rule, hindi siya pwedeng maging object ng contract. However, unless expressly provided by law. Kailan? Like example dito is in case of marriage settlement. Anyway, when you say future inheritance, meaning pag yung parents mo ay buhay pa, hindi mo pa pwedeng ibenta ang iyong mamanahin. Okay? Yung expected mo na matatanggap if ever mamatay yung either yung father mo or yung mother mo. Okay? But note that yung inheritance, it ceases to be future upon the death of your parents or the descendant. Okay? So, pag namatay yung parents or yung father mo, hindi na siya future inheritance. Kahit pa hindi nyo pa na de-divide, hindi nyo pa na de-determine kung saang parte ang sayo, pwede na siya actually maging um, object of contract. Soon is time as namatay na. Pero kung hindi pa, that is future inheritance pa talaga siya, hindi siya pwedeng maging object ng contracts. So, that's it. We have discussed all the concepts in, ano pa ba yun nandito kay 1347? Okay na. Yes. So, let's proceed with Article 1348. Sabi ni Article 1348, Impossible things or services cannot be the object of contracts. Actually, isa rin siya sa mga requisites para sa object of contracts. Dapat yung object of contracts must not be impossible. When you say impossible, it may be physically impossible or legally impossible. Physical, pag alam natin na malabo talaga siyang mangyari. Then, legal, pag yung batas ang nagbawal. Like, if it is contrary to law, good customs, morals, public policy, and public order. So, Yung physical impassibility, pwede rin siyang absolute or relative. Absolute, pag no one can do it talaga, kahit sino pa man, hindi. Okay? Pero pag relative, meaning, pwede sa ibang circumstance, and then, hindi pwede sa iba. Well, that's it. That's Article 1348. Wala namang something bago sa kanya. Parang na-discuss na natin yung concept niya if hindi man siya mismo uh, previously sa mga previous videos natin. Then, let's not dwell so much on this provision. Let's proceed to Article 1349. Sabi ni Article 1349, the object of every contract must be determinate as to its kind. The fact that the quality is not determinate shall not be an obstacle to the existence of the contract provided it is possible to determine the same without the need of a new contract between the parties. So, that's Article 1349. And ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? Well, simply put, to better understand or to simply put nga, uh, the object must be, sabi ni Article 1349, it must be determinate. Or, if hindi man determinate, at least determinable. Diba? Without the need of a new agreement. Kasi pag kailangan pa ng bagong agreement in order to determine the object of the contract, then meaning it is an indeterminate object, so the contract is void. Right? In existence, void. Why do you think so? Simply because, di ba sabi nga ni Article 1318, para maging magkaroon ng valid contract, may tatlong essential requisites. First, consent. Second, 
object of the contract, eh, kung indeterminate yung object, meaning hindi ma-determine like as if walang object of the contract. Thus, ibig sabihin, kulang ng essential requisites and so, walang valid contract, void yung contract. Example, if Pogi promise, promised Ganda to give Ganda one of his cars, isa sa mga sasakyan ni Pogi. So that is determinable without the need of a new contract, di ba? And then, pero kung yung nangyari is ganito, Pogi promised Ganda to deliver a thing. Hindi sinabi kung anong bagay, basta sabi niya, magbibigay siya ng bagay kay Ganda. So, dito, the contract is void. Bakit? Dahil yung object is not determinate as to its kind, nor it is capable of being made determinate without the need of a new contract or further agreement between Ganda and Pogi, right? Now, another example, if si Pogi nag-promised siya kay Ganda na to deliver his December 2020 harvest ng palay, then that is a valid contract although hindi natin ma-determine kung ilan yung quantity pero it is determinable by the time dumating si December 2020 kung magkano yung harvest ni Pogi, yun yung ibibigay niya kay ganda, di ba? So the contract is actually valid or determinate na kasi yung object ng contract without the need of a new or further agreements pa between Pogi and Ganda. So that's it. That's object of the contract. It's as simple as that. Let's proceed to the next essential requisites of a contract. Cost of contracts. Tapos na tayo kay consent. Tapos na tayo kay object. So, cost. Cost of contracts. So, under Article 1350, sabi dito, in onerous contracts, the cost is understood to be for each contracting party, the prestation or promise of a thing or service by the other. In remunerary ones, the service or benefit which is remunerated and in contracts of pure beneficence, the mayor liberality of the benefactor. In our simple or ordinarily, kung di-define mo si cost, isipin lang natin, eto yung reason kung bakit mo ba i-assume ang obligation na yan. Example, sa contract of sale, malamang bakit mo ba i-deliver ang lupa? Ano ang cost? Malamang kailangan mo ng pera, right? On the other party naman, uh, bakit siya magbabayad ng pera? Malamang din kailangan niya yung lupa, right? Well, dito mo makikita na yung difference ng cost at ng subject matter is only a matter of viewpoint in some way. Kasi... Yung subject matter for one party will be the cost or consideration for the other party, right? Although in another school of thought, sinasabi ni nila na yung cost ng halimbawa, yung example natin kanina, yung sa sale ng lupa, yung cost as to pogi dahil siya ang seller, ang cost sa kanya is yung pera ni ganda. Pero kay ganda, ang cost sa kanya is yung um, lupa ni Pogi. And then, as to both parties daw, as to Pogi and ganda, the subject matter is always the lupa. That is in another school of thought. So, merong dalawa. Either way, pareho that in bilateral contracts, both have an obligation which constitute the cost or the consideration of the other. So, anyway, balikan natin si Article 1350. Article 1350 provides for classification of contracts according to cost, in which na discuss na rin natin on our first video, yung sa general provisions ng contracts. 
first, nagsabi siya about onerous contracts. Sabi, for onerous contracts daw, yung cost is understood to be for each contracting parties the prestation or promise of a thing or the service by the other. Well, simply put, meaning, say, onerous contracts, both have obligation. They are reciprocally obligated to each other. Like, the best example dito is the contract of sale. Now, sabi rin ni Article 1350, Another classification is if thou yung contract in is remuneratory, ang object, or I mean the cost of the contract thou is the service or the benefit which is remunerated. Diba? Sabi natin before sa discussion na yung remuneratory contracts are those contracts for the past service or benefit na na render so yung purpose ng contract is to reward the service that has been previously rendered nga so example is if si Pogi has rendered a service as a defense counsel for Ganda who agreed to pay Pogi an amount of 100,000 pesos for the said service then Yung object is yung 100,000 pesos. Tapos yung cost is yung services or yung service na pinerform ni Pogi in favor kay Ganda as a defense counsel. Now, another classification na sinabi ni Article 1350 is pag daw yung contracts of pure beneficence. So, meaning ito yung mga gratuitous contract. One, wherein yung cost is the mere liberality of the benefactor or ng giver. So, example talaga dito is donation. Right? So, sa donation, yung liberality ng giver, yun ang cost of the contracts. So, that's it. That's Article 1350. Let's proceed with Article 15. 1351. Sabi naman dito, the particular motives of the parties in entering into a contract are different from the cost thereof. Okay? So, iba raw ang motive at iba ang cost of the contract. Kasi yung motive is purely personal or private sa isang parties. Yun yung motive niya into entering that contract. Iba siya kay cost of contract. Example, if Pogi buys, bumili siya ng baril worth, say, 100,000 pesos dahil gusto niyang barilin si Ganda. Okay? So, dito, the cost of the contract is yung gan, di ba? As to Pogi, yung cost is yung baril. And, Yung pera, yung pera is ang cost and the part of the seller. Okay? And yung motive, dito mo makikita na yung motive is different from cost of the contract. Kasi yung motive ni Pogi dito is to kill ganda. ba? So motive is actually very personal and private to the contracting parties. Uh, its validity or invalidity is nothing to do with the validity or invalidity of the cause or the consideration. Okay? So, let's distinguish motive from cause. First, ang motive of a person may vary. Iba-iba. Although he enters into the same kind of contract, the cause is always the same. Diba? Yung motive mo, pwede iba-iba. Ngayon, gusto mong bumili ng baril, gusto mong patayin si ganda. Bukas, wala. Gusto mo lang bumili ng baril para proteksyonan ang sarili mo. An illegal cause makes a contract void. Pero illegal motive does not necessarily render the transaction void. Right? Kagaya nga ng example natin, Although yung 
pag-purchase ng baril is valid, pero yung motive actually is the killing of ganda which is invalid. And yet, the transaction, yung pagbili ni Pogi ng baril is valid. Right? So, that's Article 1351. Let's proceed with Article 1352. Sabi, Contracts without cause or with unlawful cause produce no effect whatsoever. The cause is unlawful if it is contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. So, what are the requisites for a cause? Kasi alam na natin na pag wala naman talagang cause, that contract is void and so it would really produce no effect whatsoever. Sabi ni Article 1352. Now, ano ba yung requisites for cause? Sabi first, it must be present. Dapat mayroon. Kasi kung walang cause, then kulang yung essential requisites ng contract which is consent, object, and cause. Now, yung cause daw first, it must be present. Dapat mayroon nga. Second, it must be true. Dapat din totoo, hindi false. And third, it must be lawful. Sabi, lawful pag hindi siya contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. Pabalik-balik na. Anyway, so maybe we should just proceed with Article 1353 na rin. Sabi, the statement of a false cause in contracts shall render them void if it should not be proved that they were founded upon another cause which is true and lawful. So, this provision talks about the effect kung yung cause na nasa contract ay false. Okay, yung cause meaning is valid, pero hindi siya yung totoong cost. Ang sabi ni Article 1353, Yun daw, yung contract ay magiging void pag hindi na prove ng parties that it is founded upon another cause which is true and lawful. So meaning, kailangan ding i-prove na yun ay true. Kumaga yung hidden na totoong kasi false statement of cause. So yung totoong tinago yung cause pala, dapat ay Lawful din siya, okay? If the parties can show that there is really another cause and that is that cause is true and lawful, then the parties shall be bound by their true agreement. Okay? Kasi meron naman pala talagang cause. Pero pag hindi nila yun ma-prove, so dahil founded with a false cause, then the contract is void. Okay, so let's take an example. Halimbawa, si Pogi and si Ganda gumawa sila ng contract of sale with respect doon sa sasakyan ni Pogi. At doon sa kontrata, sa deed of sale, may nakalagay na contract price and stating 100,000 pesos for the car of Pogi. However, yung totoo, wala talaga. Kasi ginawa lang naman nila yon to defraud the other creditors of Pogi. Baka kasi kunin, i-attach yung kanyang sasakyan, pambayad niya, ayaw niyang magbayad. So, gumawa sila ng kontrata ni Ganda that he actually sold the car already to Ganda. So, since wala yung contract actually, in truth, ay false yung cost doon. Dahil wala naman talagang binayad or binigay na 100,000 pesos si Ganda in favor of Pogi, then there is really no contract of sale. Right? However, if ang nangyari is ganito pala, sa totoo din naman, etong si Ganda has rendered previously, nakapag-rendered siya ng service in favor of Pogi. And that service cost or worth and rin, equivalent to 100,000 pesos rin. 
And so, for that reason, kaya nag-execute ng deed of sale ng sasakyan si Pogi in favor of ganda. Although, yung nakalagay nga sa contract of sale nila is nagbayad siya ng 100,000 pesos. So, dito, hence, although yung cost na nakastake or nakasaad sa kanilang kontrata is false, there is another cost which is actually the true and lawful cost ng kanilang kontrata, right? And so, that contract of sale for the car of Poggy is valid, okay? So, that's Article 1353. Let's proceed with Article 1354. Ito naman provides for a presumption na nag exist and that yung cost is lawful. Okay? So, meaning, hindi naman talaga necessary na yung cost be expressly stated in the contract. Pwede siyang hindi may lagay kasi pinipresumed siya ng batas na lahat ng contract ay mayroong corresponding cost which is lawful right but then since presumption lang naman siya then pwede pa rin namang i-prove otherwise okay pwede kayong mag show ng proof na wala talagang cost or yung cost na totoo na hindi nakasaad dyan is unlawful okay so let me repeat lang it is necessary that the cost must exist okay but it is not necessary to state the cost in the contract. Bakit? Kasi it is presumed that the cost exists and is lawful. That is under Article 1354. Okay? So, let's take an example. Eto. In a promissory note, eto yung nakalagay. Now, if you will see... Uh, if you will examine the promissory note, it did not state that Ganda promised to pay Pogi 10,000 pesos because Ganda did not receive anything from Pogi, anything worth 10,000 pesos. Diba? Now question, is the promissory note valid if it did not state the cost received by Ganda from Pogi? Well, the answer is Yes, because the law presumes that as even if the cost is not stated in the contract, it exists and that at the same time, it is lawful. So that's it. That's Article 1354. Let's proceed with the last article that we will be discussing in this topic. So Article 1355. Except in cases specified by law. Lesion or inadequacy of cost shall not invalidate a contract unless there has been fraud, mistake, or undue influence. Okay, lesion means inadequacy of cost. So, yun nga, ito, inadequacy of cost. So, general rule, lesion or inadequacy of price does not invalidate a contract. Hindi porket parang napakamurang binenta, invalidate na kaagad. Kung baga hindi na valid yung contract. Yung exception is pag together with lesion, merong fraud, mistake, or undue influence. Okay? Aside sa parang napaka, or I mean hindi parang, but aside from the fact na inadequate nga yung price for the contract, Nag, meron pang fraud, mistake, or undue influence. So, pag meron ganun, that is the time that the contract is not valid. Okay? So, let's take an example. Eto. If si Pogi binenta niya ang kanyang house and lap, which supposedly cost more than millions, okay? Binenta niya lang for 100,000 pesos in favor of ganda. So, napakamura nga. Meron talagang inadequacy of price. Pero, yung contract of sale dito remains to be valid. Kasi nga, sabi ni Article 1355, insufficiency or inadequacy. Inadequacy of the price of the contract does not invalidate the contract. 
Okay? Pero if it can be proved that if later on, it can be shown that actually kaya binenta ni Pogi kay Ganda for an amount of 100,000 pesos lang ang kanyang house and lot ay dahil through mistake, baka nagkamali nga lang, or hindi kaya merong uh, undue influence, or di kaya it was done through fraud, hindi naman alam ni Pogi, na-deceive siya ni Ganda. So, in that case, yung contract of sale can be annulled in court. But then, let's show maybe evidence, kailangan mo ng evidence for the presence of fraud or mistake or undue influence, kahit saan doon. Yay! Congratulations for making it this far, for listening and for watching this video until this point. Kung nandyan pa kayo, salamat ng mabuti. Pa-comment naman kung napanood nyo ng buo para at least alam ko kung worth it ba itong mga efforts. Anyway, salamat and then see you on our next videos. Bye!